Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to work on building some headers for the Roadster pickup project. I uh, got a whole pile of mandrel bends here, some flanges, and uh, some old 35 36 Ford torque tube drive shafts. That is kind of the combination of pieces you need to make headers and kind of do the old school torque tube drive shafts, uh, headers, that's how it was done. So we got all those pieces. I'm going to actually be using two of these drive shafts for the, uh, for the project. Sometimes people cut them in half and make little shorties. We're actually trying to make these a little bit longer on this truck and kind of go along the Model A frame. So we're going to show you the process and uh, hopefully by the end of this we'll have a cool set of headers that look good and also sound really awesome. So let's get started. Check it in the back. Oops, you can sit it in front of it, it don't matter. Uh, it doesn't look too bad there in the, in the back. In the front. Right. So let's pick that up. Yeah, alright. So, obviously it needs to go in, so let's get rid of this tube here. Out of my way. <laughs> All right, so push yours. Um, tough part with mine is this. All this stuff in the way. Yeah. Yeah. So pull yours a little out, like your jack stand. Put it more towards the end of the drive shaft a little bit. Okay, and then push the whole thing in close to the frame. There you go. Something like that. I just got to figure out a way to hold my... Is the door open all the way? Uh, looks like... Yeah, because you're down below the rocker. The door is up here. Oh. So you should be having enough room there that it just goes underneath. That's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. I almost wanted it... I don't know if it's possible. I almost wanted it to tuck under the car. Under the body some. So I don't know if... Can we frame it? I could maybe go down one here. Push yours in just a little bit more. Yep. I would move your jack stand towards the end more so it drops your back end. It's definitely better. Uh, maybe put it all the way on that, that narrow, the narrowest part there. Ouch. Okay. That gives us a lot more room to mess with there. The only thing I have is the steering arm here. Uh, it's really far to come out with the headers. That's the only thing. So we're probably going to get rid of where it tapers here. I'm going to have to cut it somewhere like back in here. Yeah. So it doesn't look silly with a taper in back. I really like where that's at. It's just tough with the...
All right, so we've got the first two pipes made here. Um, really, a lot of the time is just in getting this flow of how we want it. So, um, fairly happy with this. The big thing is I wanted the pipe to be kind of as flat as possible on the side of the body here. I didn't want it to be at a heavy angle. Sometimes when guys do them, they're like real steep, sharp angle, which is totally cool. But on this truck, I was trying to kind of hide the, uh, the Model A frame a little bit, and then also the wishbone mount. I wanted to kind of make that disappear a little bit as well and run just right next to and under the cab. So there's only a, just a little tiny angle there, not too bad. Um, so the big thing is with the way the engine sits, you have to kind of come up. So all these pipes, you have to make these little, um, you have to make these little stubs here to go into the flange and they need to have like a 45 almost bent into them to get it up and over the frame. So I always use a set stack of like washers or something like that. Use the same spacer on every side and keep it at minimum sitting on those washers and that keeps everything kind of parallel and makes everything kind of flow together. So fairly happy with how all that's looking from the front side. You can see kind of all just the headlight blocks a lot of it, but it all should just kind of flow out the same. So I have the last cylinder here to work on and this one's probably the hardest. Now this is where you guys may remember in the video um, earlier on in the project, the steering box used to be like here. And one of the other reasons that I moved this steering box is every time you do headers, well actually it's probably about, I'm trying to feel where my weld is, it's probably right about here. Every time I've done a flathead V8 or help a friend do one, in a um, in a Model A frame that's kind of like a stockish type setup, this cylinder is always jammed into the steering box. So by me moving the steering box back a little bit, it got the most of the steering box, the bulk of it, away, and we have a little bit of room. But still, I got this little uh, it was a 90 I cut down, and what we can do is I have it pretty short on the one end, and. I can come out just around like that. It's hard to see, I know, but there's plenty of clearance there. So I can rotate this pipe and get just the right clearance, however I want, um, around the steering box. So there's clearance no matter what, but we don't want to jam it so it's like this and touching the steering box. But if I rotate it just a little bit, it'll get it, it'll get it going forward and up and then we can start building our pipe around here. And then same thing, I'm gonna get like a 90 and do like a fish mouth on it. And then it'll come right into here and flow in and should look pretty cool. So that's what I'm working on. I already got this pipe cut for the little stub. So I'm good with that. So now I need to make this piece that's gonna flow into there. Um, probably the next thing I'll do is, uh, I gotta make a little 45 that's gonna go the other way. So it's gonna go away like that. And then it's gonna have the 45 like up even a little bit, I think. So I gotta work on those little pieces or just making all these little cuts. And you can see like this one here, I made a little uh, sliver that I put in that gave it just the extra little um, angle that we needed to make the pipe flow. Once you weld it all together, you don't even really notice it. But these are the little things you gotta do to get everything to fit and look cool.
right, so we're ready to start on the other side. I uh, figured I'd just talk about a couple things real quick since we uh, kind of buzzed through the other side. Uh, so if you're doing torque tube headers, uh, the term torque tube, header, torque tube headers a lot of times people think means the actual torque tube itself, which is very heavy and is not really what it was. I, I don't know how the terminology came over the years and got changed, but really it's drive shaft headers. So uh, what was used back in the day, so to speak, in the early hot rodding days was a 35, 36 Ford uh, torque tube drive shaft. On those two years only, the drive shaft, for whatever reason, is hollow and tapered, and it's just naturally tapered like that, the way it was made, and it's pretty much symmetrical on both sides. One end has uh, the end here that actually goes into the rear and is splined, and then it has a pin uh, in it that you drill out, or rivet out to take the rivet out. The other side has the spline end that would go into your uh, transmission, into the U-joint. So the shaft itself is basically, it's symmetrical, like I mentioned, it's all the same. So you can start at either end. Um, if you chop off this end, this piece is a little bit of a pain to get out. I kind of forgot, and on the other side I had to fight with a little bit, but this piece is actually sunken in a good two inches, and it's like, I think they heated it and dropped it in and then welded it, so it's hard to get out. You have to actually just cut it up into pieces. So probably better to chop it down here. So because it's tapered on both ends, you're obviously gonna wanna go down to where it, the taper stops, or starts rather, and uh, and chop that off, and that'll give you your nice round, like megaphone look at the end there. So that's what we're gonna do in the chop saw here in a second. Um, the other end, we will chop off and right behind the weld, because we want it as small as possible because we're gonna slip our tube for our headers right into it. You have to, you have to put some relief cuts, squeeze it together, and then weld them up and blend all them out uh, to get it to fit nice and tight, but that's basically the process. Now, uh, if you're looking to do just little shorty headers, uh, you can you can make a set a pair of headers out of one drive shaft because it's tapered on both ends. So you cut it right in the center. That will give you those real short headers that'll basically come out like just right at the cow, right at the door. On this particular truck, I'm trying to actually get them to run under the door and kind of go right along, almost parallel with the frame. So we're using a full drive shaft. Obviously, you need to have two of them laying around. To do that, we're lucky enough that we have an overabundance right now, so I can waste two of these. So that's basically what you need to know if you're looking to build a set of torque tube or drive shaft headers. Um, this is what you'll need is one of these. So um, let's get cut.
All right, so exhaust on. We made a little bump in the uh, in the firewall for clearing the oil cap and some other little odds and ends we've been meaning to do. And uh, hear what our exhaust is going to sound like. May have to prime the system. We don't know yet. Oh, battery. Hooked it up. Oh, jeez. Yep. Ready? Yep. May have to crank, pump it up. Sounds like up. Yeah. Not in the garage. It sounds always sounds so much louder in here. So we ran the truck with the new exhaust and it sounds awesome. Uh, nothing beats the sound of these uh, torque tube drive shaft headers. They are like a pretty thick uh, wall on them and it gives this nice deep sound uh, that is just a flathead with torque tube um, headers is just like, it's just got this great sound that is just super old school and I love it. And uh, yeah, everything worked out really well. We have to make a couple of mounts on the, uh, on the, on the headers down below the door under the frame um, just to hold for the weight so that we don't break any welds or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to do those here real soon and, and get them all set up. Everything is clearing the body good. Uh, I know on camera some of the stuff might look a little tight but it does have clearance and uh, yes you will have to worry about your legs getting it out of the car but it's a freaking hot rod you know. You need to have those cool pipes to roll on the side and if you burn your leg it's just a rite of passage honestly. It's like riding an old motorcycle. Uh, don't do it again. So yeah, everything is 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 good. I mean, we just gotta connect, uh, finish connecting some things in the engine bay. We have to do the generator and get uh, all that stuff working correctly. Tune the carb up a little bit. Even after we shot that uh, shot of it running, we realized that we had the accelerator pump set on the summer setting and not the winter setting. And with this engine set up, it needed that extra squirt. So we put it on the winter setting, ran it, and it actually already seems a little bit better. So these are just the things you have to work through. Um, but yeah, truck runs, it's got brakes, it's got lights, it's like almost sketchy street worthy. So we got to hook up a gas pedal, that's one of our next projects to do off camera. And hopefully our next video on this truck, we are like driving it. We have basically uh, a week, a little over a week to getting to wheels of time. And our goal was to drive it, at the very least drive it up and on and off the trailer under its own power for that event. Uh, we are really, really close, so we just have a couple more things to do. But uh, hopefully here soon, the next video, 
we were driving this thing around the block and uh, making a little bit of noise and raising some hell. Let me know what you guys think of the uh, the new headers, good or bad. You can tell us if you hate it. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to change them anyways. But I want to hear what you have to say down below in the comments. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.